place. I'll be asking an important question. Is there a silent regime change in Turkey? I was born and grew up in Turkey, and I'm ethnically half Kurdish, half Turkish. I remember during my childhood, my grandparents used to speak a different language at home, Gurmanje, a Kurdish dialect spoken in Turkey, but they didn't teach us and they didn't, they didn't speak outside home. And I remember asking my grandmother why she didn't teach us, including my mother. And she said, you will understand when you grow up. I think that's why I have always been interested in studying politics, nationalism, and also contemporary Turkey and the Middle East. I left Turkey in 2001, just before the pro-Islamic government under the Justice and Development Party came to power. <coughs> Sorry, how? <laughs> just on the right button. Sorry. Uh, just before the contact in, in, in uh, just before the I left Turkey in two thousand and one. Just before the pro-Islamic government, uh, Justice and Development Party, the AKP, came to power. And Turkey I lived was a secular, modern, democratic country. And why Turkey is important? Because Turkey was the first Muslim country engaged with European modernity that transformed itself from the Islamic Ottoman Empire into a secular nation state at the beginning of the 20th century. In 2001, the AKP won the party and they kept winning uh, three more elections in 2007, 11, and 2015. Especially uh, secularism <laughs> has been always a very uh, sensitive and contested, essentially contested concept in Turkey. Secularism meant a separation religion and politics in domestic and foreign affairs. The last book, in the last sentence in my book, especially uh, when I wrote The Rise of Islamic Fundamentalism and the Kurdish question in the 1990s can be interpreted as the result of the problematic nature of democratization and a reaction to the uneven development of secularism and modernity on the society level. However, the Turkish transition to modernity is an incomplete project which had its origins at the beginning of the 19th century and Turkey is still uh, questioning its present. The Turkish transition to modernity is an incomplete project which had its origins at the beginning of the 19th century and Turkey is still questioning its present. Hence, since 2002, the rise of political Islam in the context of the AKP's tenure in power can be seen as Turkey questioning its present. However, Turkey's present is deeply worrying. Today, Turkey is bitterly divided and deeply polarized society since I left. And it's sad to see what is happening in Turkish politics. When the AKP came to first power in 2001, it was a promising example of secularism and democratization in the Muslim context. And again, you may all remember what happened in 2001. 9-11 terrorist attacks that put Islam on international agenda, not only as a regional context as we see in the Middle East. So my big question is, did Islam play a crucial role for the rise of AKP into power? My answer is a resounding no. Islam did not play a role to bring AKP to power, but following reasons. The AKP <coughs> leaders highlighted they are conservative Democrats, like just Christian Democrats in the West. They never highlighted the pro-Islamic roots of the, Islamic, uh, the AKP as an Islamic party. And also, they accepted the secular character of the state, which allowed them not to have a clash with the military, which acted as the guardians of secularism in Turkish history. More importantly, it's 
the economy. They promised to find an economic uh, uh, solution, economic development, to fix the financial crisis of 2001. The AKP has remained in power since then by winning three more elections. And during the AKP role, Tayyip Recep Erdogan had become the first prime minister who took the party to three landslide uh, victories and also became the first elected president since 2014. One of the slogans AKP highlighted was the new Turkey, quote unquote, quote unquote the new Turkey. While some promoted Erdogan's new Turkey as a rising model, the so-called Turkish model, many, including myself, were very skeptical about a hidden ideological agenda to Islamize Turkish politics. While during the first term, first decade of the AKP rule, AK, under the AKP, Turkey has achieved exemplary economic development, tackled the role of military in politics as main obstacle in, in front of democratization, and also, more importantly, a peace process was engaged with a peace process with the Kurdish minority. What we see is so far so good. But unfortunately, things have changed since 2013. And I think that there is a silent regime taking place. And this has been unnoticed in the West. And the regime change turned a promising Turkish model into an authoritarian rule by weakening secularism and democracy. This is not because Islam was the main reason but this is because the use and abuse of religion in politics. Especially Turkey's importance has continued in the context of the Arab Spring in 2011, and more importantly, the rise of Islamic State, as well as the Syrian civil war, and the continuing uh, refugee crisis has put Turkey as a necessary ally not only for prom promoting better relations with the Western and the Muslim world in pre-9-11 context, but as well as a reliable ally for Western interest in the Middle East, and therefore a silent regime change went unnoticed by some in the West. What we see is uh, there were actually three basic events that affected how the regime change was taking uh, place as the new of Turkey, uh, not, not only the model, but also Islamizing the politics in, 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 in Turkish politics. Uh, as a silent regime change, three basic events uh, highlighted a change was taking place since 2013. The first one was Gezi protest in 2013. There was a second event, a failed military coup attempt in 2016. And the third event was the presidential referendum in 2017. Let me just tell you about the first event, the Gezi Park protest in 2013. It was a turning point uh, in the sense that you may remember it all started as an environmentalist project, uh, protest, especially when the government decided the last remaining green area in, in, in Istanbul's uh, Gezi Park in Taksim Square. A group of peaceful protesters occupied the park peacefully by camping, singing, dancing, and reading books. But the government's reactions were really harsh with the extensive use of uh, force. And this was, for me, was the first turning point and example that Erdogan's new Turkey would not democratically engage with anti-government protesters around 2.5 million people, according to official uh, figures. And what became very clear that during the Gezi protest, the brutality of state violence and terrorism showed the changing nature of AKP rule. 
And despite its democratic policies, the AKP won the last election in 2015 again, but this time with a really small margin <laughs> as 49.5%. Uh, and I believe since then, Turkey is in term turmoil with a bitterly divided and deeply polarized society. And the second key event uh, after the Gezi Park protest was a failed coup attempt. Again, you might remember that took place in uh, 2016. The failed coup attempt was just the tip of the iceberg and much worse followed. The symbol of the Turkish parliamentary, uh, the Grand National Assembly, was bombed by the <laughs> members of the country's own security forces and coup plotters attacked civilians on the streets of Istanbul and Ankara. The failed coup attempt united people on the streets as well as the party leaders, including the AKP's opponents, which sided with democracy or rather with Erdogan. Once Erdogan was assured that the government had taken control of the situation, he quickly announced that the failed coup was a gift from God that would help him to cleanse Turkey uh, from <laughs> Turkey's internal enemies, including the army and the pro-Islamic Gulenist movement. And he quickly highlighted that he accused the Islamist Gulen movement of running a parallel state with the aim of overthrowing AKP government. <laughs> Paradoxically, while people were more supporting democracy, uh, Erdogan was seen as the defender of civilian rule while simultaneously clamping down on civil liberties. And this is this take us to the third event that shows a silent regime change has been taking place is the presidential <coughs> referendum in 2017. Because Erdogan used the failed coup attempt to increase support for his uh, suggested changes, especially to, trans to change Turkey's political system from a parliamentarian democracy to an executive presidency. And this is when the presidential referendum took place in 2017. Again, that deeply divided society became very <coughs> visible because only 51.4 people voted yes to change Turkey's uh, political system. And the democratically approved change of political system and the constitution leads to a stronger presidency with extended powers. And President Erdogan will remain in power probably as late as 2029. In short, Turkey will be ruled by the same leader for 30 years. This has never happened before unless it was under Ottoman sultans. This never happened in modern Turkey I lived.